speaker is a Michigan alum who just completed a PhD in linguistics at Cornell. He's helped over 75 students construct their own language projects. Please welcome Ed Corman. Here's a task for you. Make a brand new language that no one has ever heard or ever spoken. You need to be able to express any concept in it. It needs to have rules and exceptions to the rules, and it needs to be easily learned by people who speak English. Because we've got this project, we've got a book, this epic book, and all the characters speak English, and it's totally not believable. And what we would like is to create a new project uh, create a new project, and what we're gonna to need to do is reverse engineer language to do this. So we have to take language, we have to break down all the pieces, the grammar, the vocabulary, the sounds, and reconfigure them as engineers and artists of language. This has been done before, so this person, L.L. Zamenhof, you may know him better as Dr. Esperanto, had this idea. He was a Russian Jew who lived in Poland, and he decided that his goal was for everybody in the world to be able to speak with each other. And he did this through sort of a linguistic mashup. He took all the languages that he knew, Slavic and Germanic and English and, and Greek, and took bits and pieces of them, put them together so it would be recognizable. His challenge was that you could learn his new language in an hour. And some of it is immediately recognizable. And some of it is funny if you speak English, but makes total sense if you speak a romance language. And some of it is totally incomprehensible. But that wasn't his goal. His goal was comprehension. However, some people did have the goal of incomprehension and weirdness. Fast forward 90 years, and we have a new language created by linguist Mark Okran. And this language is Klingon. He took bits and pieces of language, real languages but put them together in strange ways. One thing he did was he picked really strange sounds. So there's actually no k sound in Klingon, despite the fact that it's the most common sound in the world. The language is called Klingon Hol. Um, but other languages have this and also write in their name, like Klingit and Nahuatl, which are indigenous American languages. He also mixed up the grammar. Uh, sentences in Klingon go object, verb, subject. So if John hit Mary, then John has the black eye. Um, and this is very uncommon in languages of the world. Most of them are spoken in the Amazon. So let's reverse engineer some English and see what we can do with it. What we're going to focus on here is the sounds of English. Um, so let's take a list of all of the sounds that we have in English. And here they are in the IPA, not the beer, the International Phonetic Alphabet. We have 24 consonants, 12 vowels in most dialects of American English. Five vowels you learned in elementary school, they were talking about letters, not sounds. But we're going to talk about sounds, we're actually going to focus on the consonants. We're going to put them in some sensible order here. Um, <laughs> this is organized. Each row has sounds that are pronounced in a similar way, and they go from the front of the mouth, m mm, and p, to ah, back of the throat with h, g, those sounds. We're going to make some changes. So we got rid of a few sounds, and uh, we substituted out a few. So the sounds that go ah, ba, ah, da, ah, ga are substituted with ah, 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 ah. A little bit more exotic. These sounds are called ejectives. And now what we're going to do is recombine them. So if you look in a dictionary, English dictionary, under FN, you are going to find no words, zero. It's against the rules of English, but it's easy to do. You can say it. Everybody say fnu. Phew. Perfect, you just learned your first word of Navi. <laughs> it's the Navi word for quiet. Navi has almost all the same sounds as English, but they're recombined in a different way, including this delightful monster, <laughs> which has one of those adjectives in it. So this is taking things and doing it a completely different way, taking a big pile of Legos and putting them in a new way. This is not your granddaddy's conlang, unless your granddaddy is this guy. J.R.R. Tolkien. <laughs> Tolkien is trained as a linguist, a, a, a philologist, historical linguist, and he knew that languages were nothing without their history and that they were all related to each other. He knows that chakra and cycle and wheel all come from the same word and language that was spoken 7,000 years ago. And he decided, by the time that he was a young adult, he had a whole bunch of languages that he had invented that were kicking around, but they, they, didn't, they were missing something. They were missing their history. And so he said, the stories were made rather to provide a world for the languages than the reverse. So he needed some stories for his languages, so he wrote some books that you might have heard of. But he also wrote some poetry. 
He was an artist, he was approaching language from a scientific point of view, but also as an artist, and he came up with great poetry, amazing languages, and this is how constructed languages work. So now it's time for me to say Dankon, Kako, Oingaru Sei Irayo, Hantanyao, or however you like to say it. Thank you.